What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today the guy's going to be on the mountaintops of the Giants East. Now I thought this place would have a different name but apparently it just adds on to the previous name of the mountaintops of the Giants. Just going to be the eastern portion of it. That does uh, I believe turn into the Flame Peak a little bit later on. You'll see why that is. But one thing to note before we jump into the guide itself. There was one item that sadly enough didn't hit the record button. Didn't get the footage for it. But there's going to be an invisible scarab roaming around in a circle over here on the left, just past the Lost Grace that we'll be starting off from. It's going to give you uh, another one of those Ash of War type abilities. Very easy to just jump over to that, maybe before you jump into the guide, or something to just grab up, maybe after it as well. Very easy, just one item over there on the left. But on that note, the starting location is going to be the Freezing Lake. It's where we're going to start from, and... We've got more than a few things to cover with this, so let's get straight into it. Now, from that Lost Grace, we'll start heading out towards the Frozen Lake, just past this frozen waterfall, and be going along the right side of this cliff side over here. Now, over here on our right is going to be a Stone Sword Key dungeon inside of here. Need to pull out that trusty lantern. It's going to be pretty dark in there, but first things first, we will be grabbing up a Lost Grace inside of here, and in the next room coming up, there will be a floor that will fall out from underneath you now. I think I got lucky, but there could be the possibility of if you were on the other side of that falling to your death, so do watch out for that. Not sure if that's uh, actually a possibility or not, but if you came in at the right angle, you might fall all the way to your death. Lucky enough, we did have that lost grease just behind us, though, but still could be frustrating. Now, there'll be more than a few snails inside of here, so you want to take them out. That way you don't have to deal with all the astral projection wolves and other things inside of here. But from that point, we'll jump back up on top. We'll start heading back up towards the top, and on our right is going to be a uh, small little cavern area that's going to have three different, uh, I believe, runes, actually. We've got the rune arc, the uh, larger rune, and the gold rune. Then from that point, we keep continuing on to the right side. It's going to be another one of those snails on our right. We need to take that out. A bit of crafting material right there. And essentially, we'll be heading back up towards where the entrance is, then dropping back down that hole. That way, we've got all of that covered, and that way, we can just keep pushing on deeper. Not missing anything. Now inside of there is another snail inside of here. can't remember specifically where it is. I believe it's over on the right side. We'll be getting some armor over there on the right. But nothing too fancy at least. And just over to the left is going to be the last snail inside of there. Then we're going to be clear to push on. No more enemies from this point until a little bit further. Or I believe we may be running into the boss room. Yep, that's right. Now this boss room is going to be a little bit interesting. It's actually going to be coordinated with a snail as well. So you'll have to take out these astral projections or summons. And then the snail will pop up. Now I faced off with the snail as a boss a couple of times. I can't remember whether or not with this one I was just able to destroy it fast enough. But with other fights with the snail there may be moments where the snail spawns in. And you may be able to get a little bit of damage on it, but you may not be able to finish it in that moment. But inside of this one, it was straight into it. Uh, two different bosses, then the snail spawned, I believe, over on the left side. If you don't finish it off quick enough, you may have to eat, deal with some more enemy types after that. But we'll get a nice little talisman that's going to give us uh, basically health back on consecutive hits. Could be solid for some of those builds out there trying to leech life. Definitely an interesting talisman to have. But from that point, as soon as you spawn back at the entrance, be a good idea to hit that Lost Grace again. You know, get up uh, all those uh, health pots and everything, because just over to our right, very similar to that moment in Game of Thrones at the very end, if you remember with the uh, Night's King. He rode in with that Frost Dragon, and it was a giant blizzard. Kind of a nice touch with this uh, Frost Dragon coming in. I thought it was pretty interesting, but... At the same time, that frost breath that he has is going to be an instant death right there. So you're going to want to watch out for that. Now he's always going to spawn over to our right. Generally with this fight, you could use a summons if you wanted to. Sometimes it does end up uh, not exactly benefiting you. It is kind of funny that uh, that dragon can destroy some of those uh, jellyfish all around you. But generally the... Uh, the clone will aggro it, but it may end up being one of those deterrents where it keeps flying away from you. You know, it's it's locked onto the target of the clone. It keeps pushing towards it, and then next thing you know, he starts flying off again. Or maybe he possibly has a you know a different angle in certain moments when he's attacking, which could make things a, a bit confusing for you. Could end up just being something that uh, 
more than likely gets in your way. But as you'll notice right here, it's it's kind of dancing back and forth. It does have a frost ability that it will do around its radius, but you'll notice it just keeps flying away from me. It's almost like I can't keep on target. It keeps going in the direction of the uh, mimic itself. Other moments, it will help you out, but this is going to be one of those longer fights in general. You're really going to want to make sure that you avoid that frost attack, though. promise you, it, it can be very frustrating, especially as you'll notice with how long it's going to take to just get those shots in. Constantly have to run back and forth, go to the new location of that dragon, get some more hits in. It's going to be a slow death for this dragon, but imagine you got all the way down to that last 25% of health and then uh, got hit by that frost attack. Really do look out for that, and with this one especially, anytime that you may get close to it, he can do that 360 radius attack where... It could be one of those moments where it destroys your horse. I believe that may have happened in this gameplay footage, but I can't remember. But there's a lot of moments where something could go wrong and you just want to get up behind it. Keep swinging at those legs, swinging at the wings around it, and avoid that 360 attack radius that it has with the frost. Very frustrating. And just avoid the very easy uh, melee attacks that it'll have whenever it wants to swing back around from you. Not the hardest fight in the game. Kind of wish there was, ooh, yeah, there's one of those moments where, whew, that came way too close. It's one of those things that you got to look out for, them. But, where was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Kind of irritating that we don't get any other items other than the uh, dragon heart out of these. I would have liked some type of frost ability, ash of war, or some type of spell out of this, maybe even a talisman. Would have been interesting, but I guess since the dragon hearts do give us those dragon abilities, that that's how I guess they kind of tie it up together without it needing any other type of loot dropping off of it. But, you know, I just like, I like more loot. I just want more loot, period. But from that point, we'll start heading across that frozen lake and over to our left, there's going to be a uh, another one of those churches that we'll need to get inside of. There'll be an item right outside of it that's going to be a bell bearing. We'll need to pick that up before heading in. Then we'll grab up another one of those Sacred Tears and our next Lost Grace. Now, after we've grabbed that Lost Grace, we'll start heading a little bit over to the left. I can't remember specifically. There's going to be some of those, what are they called? Those uh, giant puppy Tyrannosaurus Rex type enemies. If you've seen them before out next to uh, Red Man Castle, you know what I'm talking about. They're a bit frost this time around. Don't believe they do any frost abilities, but just around the bend over on top of this little mountain over here, we've got another one of those Ever Jail boss fights. This one, fairly simple, fairly easy. Not going to be one that uh, it's really going to give you a problematic experience. As you'll notice, it's just a little bit of a lightning attack. Very easy to stagger this guy. He will be able to heal himself, but as you'll notice, he's a bit squishy. You have the uh, proper damage. You should be laying this, at, this guy out fairly quickly. I can't remember specifically what we get out of this guy. We will get another type of spell ability. I believe a full set of armor. Armor is not that uh, interesting, trust me. doesn't really give you any boosted stats or that I can remember. But from this point, we'll need to head back to that church location. This kind of ties in with the, uh, since I did this uh, over the course of two different streams, this is where I uh, spawned back in when I came back. That way I can keep people on the uh, exact track instead of, trying to tie together the two different footages from just moving from that Ever Jail. But if you're still over at the Ever Jail, we can just head over to the left. There's going to be a small castle in front of us. But from this point, we'll start taking out, taking out some of those T-Rex puppies. There's going to be a couple of them, but pretty much the only area that we're going to see these enemy types in. Surprisingly enough, a lot easier to kill than some of those chickens. Now they can get the better of you when they start doing their little bite move, but... For the most part, since they don't jump up, fly for a minute, and then slam down, it makes it a whole lot easier. And since we can take them out uh, one at a time, it just makes it even smoother. But just over to our left, I believe we'll have another one of those explosive arrow types. And then over to our right. Much like the previous mountain top, the, uh, that's right, we'll have another Lost Grace on our right. But much like the uh, previous mountain tops of the Giants, there's some solid loot out here, but it, it's 
kind of barren, you know, here and there, there's going to be a couple of items, but there's going to be a lot more uh, walking and kind of open land and just beautiful scenery more than there is a copious amount of that loot. But up here, we're going to have another one of those uh, fire fiesta guys that's just popping out stuff from the top of his helmet. He's going to be shooting those flames. He's got a giant hammer this time around instead of a blood whip. Can still be frustrating and irritating to deal with. Would highly suggest kind of taking this one slow, doing what you can, kind of moving in and out when it comes to uh, trying to avoid his damage. He will have a couple of swing attacks, but should be able to take him out fairly quickly. We'll have another stone sword key in the middle of that uh, fortification area, and over on our right is going to be the entrance to this small castle. Now, first things first, we'll go all the way through the front door and then go out the back. It's going to be a dog on the right. I believe there'll be one item out here, which is going to be that gold room right there. Now, in the footage, I jumped over across over here. Sadly enough, there's no loot back here. Another one of those moments where I'm like, yeah, this could be a missed opportunity. And a nice little crafting material or something back there would have been nice, but sometimes the loot's just not always there. But we'll head back into that castle, go over to the right. I believe there'll be a couple of rats and dogs inside of here. We'll also have more than a few of these uh, type of flame enemies. They're a bit different from the uh, flame torch holding guys that I remember from the other castles. They have, uh, I can't remember what group they're essentially with, but we'll have some more crafting material over here. Another rat on our left as well, I believe. But from this point, this is one of those moments where I kind of got lost for a moment. I actually uh, just kind of looked past the uh, the ladder over on our left side, but we'll be heading over to that now. Kind of blends in with the area, but from that point, we'll be able to get up on top of this castle, or this mini castle. We'll have a couple more of those uh, flame torch guys. Pretty easy to deal with, luckily enough. They uh, can be staggered quite easily. We'll have another smithing stone over there on the right, and then we'll need to double back and then jump over this wall right here. Now, if we go all the way to the left, you know, I thought maybe for a second my fat suit was too large for this jump, but lucky enough, we've got an opening down there on the left, and there'll be a dead body over there that, for whatever reason, doesn't have any loot on it, but up here on the left, we'll have a couple of dogs to deal with, and then we'll have some uh, shield-toting guy over here, Almost like, or similar to those NPC uh, invasion types, but he's just got some flame abilities. He's got a solid shield that apparently we'll be able to grab up. Now, this one won't be doing fire damage for whatever reason, but I'm not 100% certain. Could be a solid shield, not one that uses them, but let me know down in the comments. Now, just over to our right, we'll have a tower that we can go up. And this is going to give us another one of those uh, spell books that we can learn from... Uh, one of those sorcerer vendors, or I believe it's the Giant's Prayer Book. Be able to grab up some more spells for some of those casters out there. And then from that point, we'll need to drop over to the right here. Now, this is where, over on the right, we'll also have some crafting material. We'll get a bit, uh, we've got one more item to grab up from the small castle, and essentially we'll need to jump up on top of this wall. Now, we won't be able to do it over here. You'll notice I took off the fat suit just thinking I couldn't make that jump, but over here on the left... Just low enough for us to get on top of that wall, run over to the right, get on top of this rooftop, and then over to our left we'll have another one of those crafting materials. I still don't know what that's used for. I keep finding that, you know, it glows purple, but at the same time it is quite frustrating that, uh, you know, one, one of those items that looks like it's, you know, a pretty decent secret, something that's kind of off the main path, unless you're really looking for it, ends up not being a, some type of rare item. Kind of wish it was something more than just the crafting material. But outside here, on top of one of these uh, frozen weird trees, is going to be a scarab that we'll need to shoot down with one of our uh, ranged abilities, and we'll get another Ash of War out of that guy. Now, there'll be a couple more of these flame guys out here. You can take them out if you want to, but essentially, we've got a gold rune, and then we'll need to just press on forward, get to our next uh, Lost Grace, and we'll be picking up the map for this area. Now, in this next area, you'll notice a lot of the bridges over here are just going to be giant chains. I'm telling you right now, I don't feel comfortable with just that snow across this. I feel like I would have already fallen through by this point, or there's no way I'd actually cross it on horseback or even on foot. But from that point, we'll be able to grab up the map and we'll grab up this Lost Graves location. This will be the main one that we'll essentially use until we get to the midpoint up here. But now we're essentially at the flame peak. 
you know, I'm not sure. The map itself said this was the mountaintop of the Giants East, so not sure which name to really choose for the title of this video. I mean, you'll have already seen it by the time you're already watching this, but I'm still contemplating whether or not to call it the Flame Peak Guide or the Mountaintop of the East. Now in this area, we're going to be dealing with a lot more of those hands. Very frustrating, but lucky enough with the hands, every time that we kill them, we have the possibility of getting one of those somber smithing stones. And I believe most of them will be level 7 in this area, so we'll be getting up more than a few of them. Now generally, the big hands, the first time you kill them, they're always going to be dropping that somber smithing stone, but... Do uh, be on the lookout for those small hands. They can still drop them as well. Now from this point, we'll take out a couple of those smaller hands. Just kind of checking around the area. We're going to have more than a few of these yetis out here. Giant yetis. Pretty simple to take these guys down. You just keep ha hammering away at those legs. Not too hard, especially if you've got that uh, weapon upgraded to level 10 by this point. Hopefully you've been through the uh, area on the left with the consecrated uh, snow field. If you have, more than likely you've already got that weapon level 10. We're ready. We've got the damage I'm ready. But we'll have one more of those. Well, I forgot. Yeah, there was one more of those uh, puppy T-Rexes. But over here on the right, we'll notice there's a building off in the distance. That's where we're going to start heading over to next. We'll need to kind of double back, get to the lower ground, and head over along the right edge. We'll be able to drop down over here. Now, it's going to be more than a few of those smaller hands, so do be on the lookout for those. And there'll be a couple of bigger hands coming up as well. Some of them, or I believe only one of them is going to be dug into the ground. I'll show you that as we come up closer to it. But do be sure to take those out if you want those somber smithing stones. You know, no reason not to uh, pick them up as you go. But over here on our left, there's going to be a hand that comes out and one dug into the ground on the right. They definitely get the better of me in this moment. Now, I will say this was one of the moments where I kind of... Uh, made the realization that dealing with these hands is not going to be, it's going to be a whole lot more trouble if you're on horseback. You might as well jump off the horseback, try to dodge their attacks, and then get the damage in. More than likely, not only are you going to deal more damage, but you're going to be able to stagger them a lot easier, and you're not going to get stuck in that stun lock moment where if they kill the uh, horse and you're stuck on the ground, it, you know, it always seems like it's a longer stagger. You're on the ground for longer than you should be, and then... You're just taking more damage than you should. So that's one thing to note about those hands in this area as later on we'll be dealing with some much larger hands than we've uh, previously encountered. But from this point we'll be able to you know, circle around, find out there's no loot around there, and then enter the building itself. We'll have another dungeon down here. We'll take the lift all the way down, promptly grab up our first Lost Grace in this location. Now over on our right is going to be another one of those Stone Sword key rooms. Should have plenty of them by this point. But it's only going to be one item inside of here, which is going to be another type of flame ability, some type of uh, sorcery. But from that point, maybe actually one of those faith abilities, cannot recall. But we'll start heading out, going over to the right. Now, in this area, there's going to be a specific mechanic that we'll notice. Also, one thing to note, over here on the right, there's going to be an illusionary wall. I think the reason for this is to just kind of jump out down here to the left as there's going to be some type of glowing uh, signature on the ground. We'll have a gold rune back there as well. That's essentially going to break the uh, type of sorcery some of these enemy types down here have. As you'll notice, I go all the way back down and you'll notice that cat's looking a lot darker than it should be. But over here on the right, we'll also have a glow ward. And that's because he's got some type of protection around him, along with the uh, gargoyle imps back there. You'll notice I'm not dealing any damage to him while he's in that darkened state, so we'll need to guide him over to this lit up uh, sigil on the ground. That way they can take off that darkness that's protecting them, and then be able to deal the damage. Now you will have to guide him a bit, but as soon as they touch that light, they will be staggered for a moment. Perfect opportunity to really get some of that damage in early, and we'll have a couple more of these to deal with as we progress through this dungeon. Now down here, as soon as we grab this glow board back there, we're going to have another, I believe it's only two of those gargoyles or fang dimps. We'll need to guide them back to that lights and then take them down fairly quickly. But from that point, we'll be able to head over to the left. Now just behind us, it's going to be nothing back here other than a little bit of crafting material, but over on our right is where we're going to need to 
hold out for a moment. We'll have one of those flame guys inside of there. Lucky enough, we can kind of trap him inside of that flame trap itself. Now, now we'll want to hit that flame trap and bring that on down. As you notice, there's going to be a hole above it. We'll need to drop down from that a little bit later on. We'll have a couple more of those uh, darkened enemies that are going to be invincible that we'll need to kind of, well, I couldn't, well, you'll see here coming up in a second. Now, we'll have another one of those flame guys inside of here. Fairly easy to take down. On our right is going to be another consumable. On our left, we've got another stone sword key room. Once we get inside of here, we're going to be grabbing up. As you notice, we'll have that hole just behind us. We're going to need that here in a second. We'll grab up the weapon in the back, which is a colossal hammer, I believe. And on our right, we'll need to grab up that glow board. As you'll notice, we'll have more than a few of those fanged enemy types down here, so we'll need to jump on down. Now, I couldn't get them kited down. I thought I was going to be able to pull them back to that uh, lit up sigil on the ground, but that's going to be the colossal hammer or great hammer that we'll have doing a little bit of that fire damage getting some faith strength or faith uh, attribute to it. Not sure whether or not it's one of the most powerful, but could be interesting to use. But from that point, we'll just need to head back and uh, go towards the opposite direction, head down this lift. Now, once we get down here, we'll want to activate the lift again. Just below it, there's going to be a light that's going to light up a uh, one of those, I guess, little sigils on the ground. We'll need that as there's going to be... Uh, one of those yetis inside of here that's going to have that darkened power. Now, if you don't have that lift already all the way up, that's not going to be lit up, so you won't have that available. That's why we'll need to get that done beforehand. Now, we'll need to guide that guy all the way back, and lucky enough, as soon as he gets hit, like I said before, as soon as they touch that light, they're going to get staggered. We'll be able to get in fairly quickly and then drop him to his knees almost instantly. Just take him out like it's nothing. Now, just behind him is going to be the doors that'll... Lead us down to the boss fight. Now, we won't be going there just yet, but just off to the left, we've got another one of those glow warts. And just below us, you'll notice there's an area that we can get down to. We'll be getting down to there from a different route. You could jump over right there, but essentially we need to uh, activate that lift one more time just to get all the way down there. And we'll have that light down there because there's going to be another couple of those enemies with that darkness uh, protecting them. And it's going to be a couple of those cats. And whew, you know how uh, devastating those cats can be. And... You give them invulnerability, nightmare. But just behind the lift itself is going to be another one of those glow warts. And then we'll need to kite this cat over now. Do not start running in the opposite direction. You kind of want to keep this one in this area since there's going to be another cat off to the right. Luckily, it didn't aggro it right there. But if you start pushing around over to that right corner, you could get that second cat on you. And whew, two of those cats at one time, that's, that's not a fun one right there. Now over to the left, we'll have a couple of openings now. Just above us right there is one spot that we could drum down from the next area that we'll be heading over to, but we'll essentially want to aggro that second cat over, get him over into the light, make sure that we can start dealing damage to him, man. Do deal that damage as soon as he hits the light. You know, he's got that stagger moment. You definitely don't want to, well, for whatever reason, he didn't get staggered right there. Well, maybe you don't always win that one, but should be able to... Uh, Avoid as much damage as possible with this cat. Still frustrating. That ability to just levitate and then drop down is more frustrating than I can uh, say. But over there, just behind him, going to be another one of those glow warts. We'll head up the ladder on the right side. Nah, well, it's just the way that my footage goes. Essentially, this is the area that we'll need to come up and drop down from. But up on top of here is going to be another two of those glow warts. And then we'll head back down that ladder again. And we'll have one more enemy type to uh, fight off with, which is going to be another one of those flame hat guys, like the one that we saw previously with the miniature castle. He's still got that hammer, he's still swinging away, and he's still spitballing all around him from that hat. So be careful in this next area. But lucky enough, we do have some poles inside of here, so any of those times where he just lowers that head and starts cannonball from that fire hat, we'll be able to avoid that damage fairly easy in this area. Now, you know... Not exactly going to be the uh, easiest thing to deal with, but you'll notice a nice little easy moment to uh, health pot in that moment. He can start to become a little bit of a machine gun when he lowers that head with that hat, but we should be able to kite him around those uh, poles, deal some damage, keep moving in and out, or possibly just try and stagger him as much as possible. But over on the right, we're going to have another one of those seals for those faith uh, builds out there. This one just primarily focuses on amplifying the fire damage, and we'll have another one of those great uh, ghost glow warts, I believe, or grave. 
not exactly sure which one it was, but you see it there on screen. Now from this point, we'll need to head back to that location where we found the two glow boards and then jump down. Now we'll be heading straight into the boss fight itself after we've made it all the way up that long ladder. We'll jump down, start heading directly for this boss now. This boss is going to be very similar to the one type of enemy that we saw at the beginning of the mountaintop of the uh, giants. It's the one that spits out that frost and a long range ability. Not exactly the hardest when it's just one-on-one uh, -on -one and they're not grouped up, but at the same time still can deal some devastating damage, but should be able to take him out fairly quickly. Now we'll get some nice little armor from him that isn't exactly the greatest, but we will get his... Uh, curved greatsword I believe it is not really anything too fancy about it but it does have uh, some type of build up on it I can't remember what exactly it was maybe something to do with frost that's what I'm expecting out of it but from that point we'll be able to spawn back at the beginning and then we'll need to head back in the direction there'll be a hand just below us if you want to kill that and grab up that uh, somber smithing stone by all means take the time to do so but we'll have another somber smithing stone over to the right as we come out and then we'll kind of just hug this right wall all the way until we get back on top of uh, this cliff side over here. Now there's going to be a bunch of those swords like we've seen with many of the other areas that give us a uh, little bit of detail to the area or who's going to be the boss in that area. We will have uh, quite the giant to deal with later on, but we'll see that coming forward. Now kind of a funny moment here. I just kind of went up to this Yeti and stood next to him. It's almost like he, you know, he looked over at me and uh, I Thought for a moment we were just taking in the view, you know, we were friends, and then all of a sudden, uh, he just turns aggro on me. I thought it was going to be an NPC with the way he was acting there for a moment, like I could speak to him, but turns out that wasn't the case. Didn't end up killing him. Don't know whether or not he drops anything, but most of the yetis in this area didn't end up dropping anything. So I just let him live. We had that nice peaceful moment on the ridge just looking at the tree. So we'll let that one live. But from that point, we'll start heading back up the mountain itself and then going along the left side, we'll kind of push up. We'll have a couple more of those. Uh, well, we're going to have some giant chickens over here. You know how I feel about those chickens. And they're just as devastating as they were inside of that blood river. Oh, God. I hate them. Now, this is another moment where I'd say get off the horse. It's probably going to be easier if you're not on horseback for this moment. You'll just be able to deal a little bit more damage, may be able to stagger them a bit quicker, use that ability from the Ash of War, and then not have that moment where you could get just flung off as soon as the horse dies, but at the same time, you can get that, or you can work around with that mobility from the horse back. That's going to give you a little bit more of a opportunity to, to avoid that damage, but it's going to be more than a few of those smaller hands over on this left side, and as we progress forward. Now you'll notice we'll have some of these giants fighting some of these chickens. We'll just kind of avoid them. We'll go around them. Nothing to really gain from killing them other than just, uh, you know, some extra runes. You may have one of those giants come after you. That happens, you know, just take them down fairly quickly. Should be pretty easy. Just keep swinging away at those legs. We'll be chopping that tree down. Now going forward, keep maintaining the... Uh, Right pathway, still going to be dealing with some of those hands. Can be very frustrating. Best bet is to get up behind them or just jump off the horseback altogether. But like I said before, it is kind of dry in this area when it comes to loot. You know, there's some solid loot out here, but it's kind of scattered here and there. A lot of just open area that has a bunch of spots that look like they'll have loot, but doesn't essentially have it. But from that point, we'll cut across the middle. you notice the giants and the chickens, they've kind of pushed downward. Over to our left, we're going to have a little gap to jump through now in this location right here we're going to have a giant giant hand we've got the biggest we've got the colossal hand that's what i'll give this one the name of super frustrating jump off the horseback you're not going to want to do this on horseback it's just too big it's got a large radius that it can hit with best bet is to literally get in its face as soon as it starts doing any one of its moves just dodge roll and even if you're just underneath it you'll be able to dodge its attack ability you'll notice here in a moment i get flung off that horse you know the horse just gets dropped now i did have a close call right there but it did get stuck right here over to the left 
notice I get knocked off the horse again, but I'll be able to dodge his attack, get underneath him, and then just deal some heavy damage, be able to take him down fairly quickly, even, I guess, finger walks away from me at the same point, and I'm able to get behind him, but just beyond that, just where he dropped down, or that colossal hand did, we'll have another one of those smithing stones and a lost grace on our right. Now, just beyond this, we're going to have another one of those quick disappearing scarabs. Lucky enough, we can just go back to that Lost Grace and then come back. You'll you really want to be on horseback for this one just to get in there quick enough. But as soon as you get one swing in, you're, you're pretty much golden. You'll be able to get that somber smithing stone out of him. Now, from this point, we'll head back to the Lost Grace and then start pushing along the right side. Be a little bit of a cliff face over here. And we'll have a chain in front of us that'll progress to the next area, but we won't be using that just yet. Now, there's going to be a couple of yetis over here that are going to be throwing some rather large pots with some serious damage to them. Now, lucky enough, as soon as we do kill one of these, I also got one of those golden seeds on right, but as soon as we do kill these, uh, these yetis that are throwing these pots, they will be gone for good. Even if we do die in this area, we will not have to continuously keep killing these. Thank God. So I'll tell you right now, it's a few moments I die here, and if I had to keep coming back and keep killing these guys just to kind of explore this area, whew, it'd just be very taxing. I almost think they should have left it in that they kept spawning, but at the same time, it's it's a sweet relief mo moment that uh, we don't have to continuously deal with these guys throwing those large pot at large pots at us from long range because they can be devastating and they will stagger you quite well. But from that point, we'll kind of head over to the right. Now over here on the left, a giant's going to have a hand come out from underneath him. Kind of a weird spot for that hand to crawl out, but ended up throwing me over the edge. Very frustrating right there. But if you just run straight underneath that, uh, that giant or frozen Yeti giant statue right there, be able to make quick work of that hand. That way you don't get pushed over that edge. But just off to the right, we'll have another one of those. Uh, I can't remember what that is. Some type of starlight. I believe what it does is essentially give us the ability to save our runes in case we die in that moment. If we use it, we'll have them come. Blah, blah, blah. Losing, my, uh, losing my ability to speak right now. We'll have another couple of those T-Rex puppies and then some more of those smoldering butterflies next to the larva or molten lava larva. Oh, goodness, I'm really losing my ability to speak right now. Some of those slugs that are going to be molten lava. Now over here on the left, we'll have another one of those skulls that we can jump on top of. Kind of another missed opportunity for some loot that I really thought should have been there. There'll be one spot on top of one of these giant skulls that will have loot, but I really felt like each one of them should have had some loot on top of it. I guess it was essentially just, you know, part of the scenery, the area. Now over here, there will be a Yeti in the middle, but on our left is going to be another one that throws those pots again. We'll want to make sure that we take out that Yeti first. This is one of those moments where I'm like, you know, thank God that they don't respawn because very frustrating at the range that some of these guys have. And especially if we had to deal with three of them, three of them at a time, each time just moving through this area would be a whole lot more aggro. But from that point, I appreciate it. Lucky Savage. But from that point, we'll start heading over here to the left. And I can't remember. I believe this is another dry spot. We'll have some crafting material over here. I appreciate it again. Lucky Savage. But, I believe that's all that's going to be on this left side. Like I said before, very similar to the mountaintop of the Giants area. Kind of dry. There's some solid loot out here, but just kind of speckled here and there. Now from this point, we'll start following along the left portion of the edge. I don't believe anything's going to be on this left edge. Another spot where you think there'd be some loot just going underneath in that small little cavern. But as we go along this left edge, we'll have a little bit of a drop off over here. We'll need to head back down this area. I believe we're getting another crystal tier down here. Now, once we get down there, there's going to be more than a few of these small hands. So get ready. You may need to jump off the horse bag. It's kind of a, a tight little spot. It's also going to be another one of those larger hands over here. Is that the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the colossal hand right there. So be ready for that. I completely forgot about that one. 
whew, like I said before, you want to get off that horseback, you want to deal with this on foot, be able to dodge roll some of those attacks, get underneath it or just behind it, try to stagger it as much as possible. Now, just over here on our left is going to be that small little path along the edge of this cliffside. It's going to be more than a few of these smaller hands, so I highly suggest getting off the horseback, dealing with them uh, face to face. You'll notice how tight the uh, squeeze is right here. Would be a horrible moment to have with, you know, the amount of hands that are going to be around this corner coming out. If they get you knocked off that horse, they're just all going to be slamming down on you. Could be another death in that moment. But if we get off the horseback and kind of funnel them into this small spot, take them out fairly quickly. I believe there's still going to be a couple more as we come up along here as well. So that's another reason why we want to kind of drop off that horseback for this moment. There will be a larger hand as well. Hopefully nobody gets taken off the edge with that one. But there's going to be a crystal tier. Now with this crystal tier, there is something special about that one. Specifically, it, it, as soon as you put it into the mixture, it's going to be one of those that when you take damage, you may receive health back on the consecutive uh, hits of damage with that. So it could be one of those, especially for a boss fight, to take one or mix that in with uh, possibly increase the stamina or overall maximum health. That way, each time you're taking damage from that boss or someone or other common enemy types in a large pack area, you'll be getting a little bit of that health back, just kind of diminishing the damage overall that you'll be taking. Now from that point, you know, it's another one of those moments where I could jump on top of that uh, skull over there, but sadly enough, no loot on top. Just a bunch of text of other people that have made it up here as well, probably complaining about the same thing I said. It's just a missed opportunity for loot. But from that point, we'll start heading over along the left edge. You can kill that Yeti if you want to, but again, it's just going to be another moment where we're just getting a bit of runes from it. If you need some extra levels, not the worst idea to kind of take them down since it can be fairly easy. But we'll start heading back towards that Lost Grace now. Don't believe there was anything. Well, yeah, there was one item down there, but it's kind of one of those useless items in my opinion. Who needs the uh, ability to uh, waste all their runes just to get back to a Lost Grace? Makes no sense to me. I, I don't even know who would ever use that item. But just kind of doubling back on the area in this gameplay footage right here, but we'll just be following along that left edge until we hit that Lost Grace, and then we'll be heading over to the right portion where... We'll finally have one of those uh, giant skull statues that we'll be able to jump on top of and get some loot finally. Now it would be a good idea to possibly spend some of those runes, get that level up, or just replenish all of our uh, health pots from that point. And over here on our left side, we'll just keep following this left edge along this cliff side right here. And just in front of us is going to be the skull that we'll be able to jump on top of. You'll notice there's going to be a wind tunnel on our right now, there'll be a couple of those uh, large chickens over here. Highly suggest jumping off the horse with these two. It can be very frustrating with two of them at the same time. It's like as soon as you attack one, you know, the other one gets ready to attack. But the first one is going to slam down, either hit you with that damage or you just narrowly miss their attack. And then the other one's ready to slam back down on you. Very frustrating with these giant chickens. I hate them. Or these are giant ravens now that I think about it. Completely different type of bird right here. But they've got the same moves as those other giant chickens. And whew, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of these guys, especially when it's uh, two on one. You'll notice it, it consistently keeps happening to me where it's like I avoid one of their damage and then the other one's just steady right behind, just ready to strike on me. And that's just almost unavoidable i can barely get an attack in at this point as soon as i do it's it just feels like you're just taking way too much damage and then boom right there it's one of those moments where you get taken off the horse and you can't do anything about it but getting off the horse melting that first one fairly quickly and then i got pretty lucky right here lucky enough this thing just flew over the edge and killed itself <laughs> unreal sometimes you get lucky inside of elden ring but from that point Start heading over towards the left around this giant skull statue. Now you'll notice there's going to be some runes, ruins over to our right. Now it's going to be the wind tunnel that we'll jump down to here in a second, but we'll head along that left side of it, and inside of that skull, we'll have another one of those ancient dragon smithing stones. And then from that point, we'll start to head down. Well, that's right, we have another one of those giant ravens. 
take that down fairly quickly. See, it just seems a whole lot easier on foot. Don't know what it is. Horseback just seems to be the death of me when it comes to those giant chickens. But we'll jump down to these uh, ruins over here, and there's going to be another one of those invasion NPC types. This guy's a little bit... Uh, yeah, he's, a, he's He's got a bit more agility to him. Could be a bit frustrating for you. He does uh, have that ability to health bond fairly quickly, but he's got a specific weapon that will grab off of this guy that's called... Uh, I think it actually is called Rivers of Blood. Is it? I can't remember. But he also have a Mac... Ugh, mask, but that rivers of blood's also going to deal some fire damage as well. But that mask will also increase our dexterity by three. So any of those users that are trying to max out that dexterity could be useful for you. Now we'll grab up another one of those sacred tears, further increasing the amount that our flask will replenish. Grab up that lost grace, and now in the gameplay footage, I, you know I look over to the left, but we've already covered this area just down here. Now I'll also attempt to try and get up to the. Uh, Small tower at this uh, church location. Couldn't quite get it. Nah, I'm pretty sure there's no loot up there, but at the time, you know, I just wasn't certain. It looked like a spot that I could possibly jump up to. Maybe there was a secret, but I'm fairly certain there's nothing up there that it's actually available to grab. Didn't quite check from the cliffside over, but when I reviewed the footage from the angles, didn't look like there was anything up there. But who knows, you know, if you want to give it a, sh give it a shot, by all means, try and jump up on top there. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But from that point, we'll hit that wind tunnel and be able to grab up another one of those Ash of War abilities from on top here, which is going to give us that giant's roar. Probably fairly... Oh, one thing to note. Wind coming down off of that skull. Now, you, you may think that it looks like it's going to be an easy drop, but from that left side, it seems like it's a death sentence. But going down towards the back and off to the right, you'll be able to survive it. But from that point, we'll be able to cross this chain over into the next area now. Sadly enough, I can't remember specifically, but there is, I don't believe there's actually any loot out inside of this area. It's kind of another one of those moments where I'm kind of baffled that this entire landscape over here is just kind of barren of any type of loot. I mean, I don't even see any crafting material growing anywhere. I suppose because it is uh, simply a boss area now, we'll be facing off with a rather large giant over here. He's going to have a shield ability, or, well, he's essentially only going to have a shield. He's going to be slamming down very similarly to any of those other yetis in the area or giants that we've seen previously. Now, if you hit his left ankle, it seems to be the weak point. You'll be able to break off whatever type of armor he was wearing right there, and then it'll be pretty much a weak spot that we can hit him at. We'll be able to deal a little bit more damage than we can to the right one, which is going to have a, some type of ankle bracelet, you know, when that's essentially armor for him. But you'll want to go after that left leg more than the right leg. The right leg's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to have a bit more damage resistance. But here coming up in a moment, you'll notice I start hitting the other one you know, it's it's fairly simple as long as you got the summons with you. His, his attacks, for whatever reason, aren't exactly the most damaging. It may be, well, like I said before, you'll want to go after that left leg, but it, there'll be a cutscene in between that will show you a moment where uh, he'll lose his leg. I'll leave that as a little bit of a surprise for you just in case you didn't want to, or just not to spoil it for you. It's, it's an interesting cutscene right there. I'd rather you see it on your own. But from that point... He's essentially lost his leg. He's he's on his knees, crawling around, just kind of slamming down with his hands. He's going to be rolling more than a few times. Now, if you hit that right leg, it will still have that armor buff to it. It's got a bit less uh, damage resistance to it. I kept hitting it thinking that, you know, maybe I could get his other leg off. Maybe it would break like the left leg had done. But essentially, I just uh, kind of wasted my time with it. Who knows? I'm not even sure whether or not the rest of his leg or any other spot it's going to deal some more damage. But we'll get a remembrance off of that guy. Now from this point, over to our right is going to be a Lost Grace that we'll be able to grab up. Again, just no more loot back here, sadly enough. Kind of a, kind of a wasted opportunity for some of that loot that could have been in this area. But we'll grab up that Lost Grace now in the gameplay footage. Uh, we'll... Uh, 
Oh, I think I did cut it out. I went over to the left area portion as well, and it just didn't have any loot as well. I think I did cut it out. Boom. Yeah, I did. So there's no point in going over there. Essentially, we'll be heading up towards this uh, Giant's Forge. Now, this is going to be the very end of this video. There's no more loot to be had. Essentially, we'll jump up on top of here, and we'll just head around the rim of it until we hit a Lost Grace, and then we'll talk to the Maiden herself. And this will progress us into the next area, but that's going to be the mountaintop of the Giants uh, East guide right there, guys. You know, hopefully this has helped you out. May not have been a whole lot of loot in this area, but more than a few things that were some pretty choice items to pick up. If you'd like to see some of this content live, obviously hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming tomorrow. We'll be doing going for that eight-hour stream, kind of covering some other areas. We'll also have the next area coming up after we talk with the Maiden from here coming tomorrow. So if you'd like to see more of this content, hit that subscribe button. But on that note, guys, that's going to be it. We'll sit at that Lost Grace. We'll just talk with the Maiden, and then we'll be on to the next area. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and have a good one.